Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying the conference so far. I'm here to talk to you about culture and the role it plays in platform success and what I've learned about how to achieve it. Working in a platform team is hard. You're trying to bring order to chaos uh, all the time whilst not choking innovation or the pace of delivery. It's really a balance between standardization and autonomy. Often you find yourself working with and seeking to master many different tools and technologies, and that can be fun um, as you learn uh, many new things. Also, it contributes to the chaos. Sometimes you feel underappreciated by the business. The value that you're delivering isn't always clear. Uh, you might feel like you're endlessly firefighting, struggling to keep your head above water, or feel unheard um, by those who you need help from. Some of you might feel that you're working in a team you might be working in a team that has losing team members to stress and burnout does any of that sound familiar it's really not a nice place to be every ask in the team or outside the team is met with resistance progress can feel slow efforts aren't being recognized um that can lead to apathy and lack of energy in the team maybe disengagement certainly stress can be on the the increase and some team members may decide that's enough and, and decide to move on. Often the reaction is to work harder, to shut yourself down even more, to take on more responsibilities, none of which generally lead to better. Hi, I'm Ronan O'Doolin, I'm the VP of Engineering at CloudSmith, and I've worked in teams that suffered all these types of challenges. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about how successful platform teams don't just think about code quality and automation and scalable architectures, all of which are important, but they also cultivate a healthy culture so that they can survive and thrive in the most chaotic of situations. Let me start by telling you a story. It's a story about the CloudSmith engineering team. And I need to mention We had a talented engineering team building a cloud native artifact management product for platform and DevOps teams. People that might be just like you. The customers started to adopt the platform, which was great told us what they really loved about it, the capabilities, the documentation, the ease of use, the team grew, uh, everything was good. Um, with that, the complexity increased. The product uh, complexity increased, the customer needs grew, and stresses and strains started to appear. Relationships across business functions at time became fractured. As, as the growth team, sales team weren't getting what they needed, Customers had to wait. There were decisions, tough decisions that needed to be made around priorities. Uh, we responded by working harder, by splitting some of that work so more work could, get, uh, could happen in parallel with individuals taking, uh, taking control and ownership. That created additional stresses and strains within the team. We weren't being true to our values. Um, good engineers left the business, kind of hit rock bottom. So what do we do about it? Well, we went back to basics in terms of how we took on work, made that work visible, planned it in two week cycles. We went back to basic stuff. We also introduced a new focus framework to balance our investments so that we, we paid attention to and measured what we, how much we were investing in building new stuff versus managing the existing uh, capabilities and backlogs. We established guiding principles for how we would work and make decisions. Again, to strike a balance between repeatability and autonomy in choosing to do the right thing. And most importantly, we became intentional about our culture. Our back to basics work was based on pretty familiar agile practices. So I'm not gonna go through them here. What we did do that was different was essentially to introduce the focus framework which is a simple approach to guide our priorities and provide visibility to the rest of the business. It categorizes work into four simple, easy to understand categories, new stuff, new capabilities that we're introducing or building um, uh, in service of our customers, improving stuff, uh, feature extensions and capability extensions that made what we had even better. Productivity, which was for our engineers, it is for our engineers to service technical debt, improve the developer experience, or help make them more, themselves more efficient, themselves and their teammates more efficient. And KTLO, the keep the lights on stuff like bug fixes and technology upgrades, it just has to be done. We measured this, we set targets, 
based on the business's need and we measure them over the course of each cycle and each quarter and use that to steer conversations around where we're investing in the right in the right areas overall it enabled us to have better conversations with other teams in the business build understanding support and trust in times of chaos some semblance of order helps yet it's pretty hard to achieve without being overly restrictive we use guiding principles to provide us with the boundaries through which we can make decisions and get things done in a consistent orderly and orderly fashion but without being overly restrictive what are guiding principles well they're documented simple clear statements that articulate how we approach technical decision making they're not strict rules or processes but they're aids that help engineers make consistent aligned decisions think of them like a like a compass that can be used in ambiguous or complex situations let me show you an example here's our guiding principles or a sample of our guiding principles for engineering each of these have more some more detail behind them to help with decision making we'll take a look at those our first principle is see it say it sort it and um, if you see something broken confusing maybe weird raise it publicly say it loudly it's either something that we need to address and fix or something that other people need to know about and enables us to make fast decisions and focus on the right things as you can see there are a number of different areas in our uh, engineering guiding principles we have 34 guidelines in all varying across uh, different areas for example one of our principles is to build in the monolith first our monolith is well known it has its quirks but it's generally understood it's uh, observable it's scalable and we've built our systems around it it's not the only place where you can build application uh, capability but it should always be the first our infrastructure uh, and costs we are all as engineers responsible for the cost of our engineering practices so as a principle we need to take that into account and if we're unsure there's help there and um, go ask we have similar guidelines uh, for all of our, our software development life cycle for incident management for communications for maintenance windows and other things too and they help us make better decisions so with the basics in place and guiding principles to facilitate decision making it was the culture and the behaviors that underpinned our success trust trust is the foundation that enables us to become a high performing team and in my view all high performing teams we talk about this we make it known we're open with one another we're open about what we know we're open about what we don't know uh, we're open about who we are we're open about our mistakes we talk about when we're not okay when we're overwhelmed um, and that's normal um, it allows us to build trust within the team it's vulnerability that that builds trust and that's something that we hold dear we value regular communication be it check-ins or rubber ducking or pairing and we embrace that regardless of whether that's in person or fully remote we also embrace transparency we work in public that goes across the organization so you can see what's going on we prefer that type of communication again it feeds in builds trust and helps share the knowledge we engage authentically with one another and value that too we don't play games or spin things to get a reaction we say it as it is we challenge without fear we won't get better unless we're challenging our thinking you know we embrace it it's okay to disagree strong opinions loosely held and um, we often debate we often disagree but we commit and then move forward we also have the difficult conversations that's a tricky one it takes courage but we know that apathy will get us nowhere and delaying having those difficult uh, conversations just slows us down when we feel off we assume positive intent it's all these cultural behaviors that are our superpowers recognition plays a big role in keeping our culture alive all sorts of progress is recognized be it delivery support behaviors i just spoke about we see daily posts that celebrate all these things right across our business it's peer-to-peer -peer recognition every week three of these uh, pieces of recognition are highlighted and shared across the wider business and we celebrate them together so how did the story end well, it's still being written, but why are we now? 
Well, we're building much better software and we're focusing on the things that matter most to the business. We're making tough decisions. We're making them faster. It's easy to resolve conflicts because we know we won't be held. We know all after effects of holding a different um, or opposing opinion. We're motivated to, do it, motivated to do our best work. We're getting better. We're learning more. We go the extra mile for each other, for our customers and for CloudSmith as a business. And we're resilient. We have to, as a startup, we need to be able to respond well to change and adversity. And our culture has enabled us to do just that. So does any of this feel familiar to you? You wanna make a change? Start discussing it, start within your own team, begin to make a change there. You may not be able to change the whole organization once at once, but you start small, make changes. People will start noticing and they'll want to be part of it too. Discuss the need for change, start basic, use guiding principles to reduce the chaos and empower others. Cultivate a, a, a culture of trust, be vulnerable, be open, be transparent. That'll help you challenge the norms. Celebrate every win, be it delivery or behavior. It can be done in little simple steps and each little improvement contributes to the long-term results. So if you're living the chaos, know there is a better way. Take the first step, build a better culture. Thank you for listening today. I'd like to invite you to enter a contest for a chance to win £250 as a, on a gold gift card. And you can redeem that at thousands of brands worldwide. You've got it this far, enter the competition and good luck. And thanks again for listening.